Time now to spotlight Oklo. Joining us for Insight, we've got the CFO, Craig Belmar. Uh, Craig, thank you so much for joining us today. I want to talk first about this big deal that you all have with the U.S. Air Force uh, now. Kudos to you all for being selected uh, to power this nuclear reactor in Alaska. Tell us what you're expecting to happen next. What comes next before shovels hit the ground? Yeah, so Diane, first of all, thank you for the opportunity for Oklahoma to be on, on your program. You know, I think we're really pleased with, you know, the, the contract that we signed to deploy a powerhouse at the Isleson Air Force Base, because I think it demonstrates that we, you know, we get a lot of attention around our, our order book as it relates to data center customers, but it demonstrates how the Department of Defense and the U.S. military can be another important customer. And so what we'll now start working with the Air Force on is things like, you know, where the powerhouse itself will go. Um, what a deployment schedule will look like. And one thing that makes this project unique versus a lot of our other projects is um, we generate heat. Normally we use that heat um, to make steam and we use that steam to turn a steam turbine generator and use electricity. But IELTSN being in Alaska, it's a cold climate. And so there's a lot of interest, not so much in using our powerhouse to generate electricity, but using that heat or that steam for things like de-icing runways and, and keeping um, the, the, the base warm. So part of what we'll also be working with the Air Force on is kind of the mix of uh, electricity versus, versus heat or steam that we will um, deploy at that facility. Craig, your CEO called this Air Force contract a big vote of confidence when it comes to your technology. What does that mean in terms of both the opportunity and the pressure on the company to deliver? Yeah, well, I think, you know, we try to talk about the fact that we've got a clean, affordable, reliable power offer. And I think having um, a customer like the the U.S. military, I think, just demonstrates that there's a lot of appetite for for the offer that we're, we've got out there. Um, you know, I was in an investor uh, conference a couple of weeks ago, and I got asked a question about um, does demand for your product keep you up at night? And just a little bit of background on me. I've spent my entire career in the energy sector, predominantly in oil and gas and in downstream bits of the business. So making and selling gasoline and jet and diesel. And in those businesses, you know, I spent a lot of time worried about the demand and where the demand was coming from. You know, we're blessed that we've got a growing order book and it almost feels like we have unconstrained demand. And so now to your point, you know, it's really about how do we start creating um, the supply to meet that demand. Um, you know, and we're already working on that. We've we've made an announcement that like all of our, our first powerhouse is going to be in Idaho, where the Department of Energy has given us both land and fuel for that um, facility. And so now we're working on site readiness activities so that we can start deploying assets there. We will be uh, filing our, our permit for our, our, the application for our first permit with the NRC later this year. And we also have a radioisotope business where we're also getting ready um, for site deployment activities, both for a pilot facility that will be at Idaho, as well as a, a larger facility further down the road. So, you know, uh, we're really, you know, trying to position ourselves to make sure we're, we're doing the things on the supply side um, to meet that demand side. So that is the question, because that's what I figured, because obviously with the growth of AI, um, you know, there is the demand for what you provide and especially the transition that the energy sector in general is shifting towards. But in terms of like full scale delivery, what does that timeline look like, especially when you're looking for for your company, this path to profitability? Right. So the path to profitability, you know, for on the powerhouse side of our business is we expect, you know, to have that first powerhouse in Idaho up and running at the end of 27, early 28, and we're really ramping activities up there. And what we haven't announced yet, but we're working with a lot of the other customers in our order book um, around where we'll, we'll deploy powerhouses two, three, four, and five. And we'll wanna be working on the deployment of those powerhouses kind of um, and, and ramping up those activities at the same time that we're working on our Idaho project. Um, I did also mention our radioisotope business, Atomic Alchemy. Um, they have a, a plan or we have a plan with Atomic Alchemy to have a, a pilot facility to make isotopes. And we'll be looking to have that facility, the pilot facility up and running this time next year. So it could potentially be producing isotopes and generating revenue as early as this time next year for the isotope business. So, you know, we've got a multitude of paths towards um, putting putting revenue on the income statement.
Okay, yeah, look, you all do have a strong balance sheet in terms of the cash uh, that you have to deploy. And look, the stock has had a massive run this year, up almost 200%. So when you think about the growth trajectory, how are you planning to put all of this to work? Is it all about the focus of, for instance, is there more the focus on the commercial side or now that the government is in play? How, what percentage are, are you deploying capital to each segment? Uh, yeah, so you know, we, we recently uh, completed um, a follow-on equity offering where we raised $460 million um, b before expenses, and we're really pleased with the outcome of that equity raise. And really, it's not that that capital is earmarked towards one thing. It's earmarked towards several things. One is that transitioning of that order book, which is currently mostly at the MOU stage, into power purchase agreements, and we're exchanging a lot of term sheets as we speak on that. It's um, activities for Idaho, which includes not just the powerhouse, but fuel fabrication. Um, also, you know, the executive orders, um, which went into place a couple of weeks ago, create a lot of other momentum factors for us in terms of um, hopefully increasing the rate at which we can have um, our permit in place. And that maybe the most important thing that those EOs do is it's putting in place some things to make um, not only our, our design is unique that we can run on fresh fuel, recycled fuel, or we can actually take um, fissionable material and down blend it into fuel for our, our powerhouses. And part of those executive orders are going to help make all those fuel supply chains um, come to fruition. So we'll have capital for that. Um, I've mentioned our atomic alchemy business that, you know, that's another place where we de will deploy capital. And maybe the one thing I haven't mentioned is what we're doing in the area of fuel recycling. So when a, a, a nuclear rod is um, taken out of a light water reactor, it still has a significant amount of the energy capacity in the rod. And when I say significant, it's circa 90%. Um, through our technology, you can take that fuel rod and that existing um, energy in the rod and recycle it and turn it into new fuel for our powerhouses. And in fact, our first powerhouse in Idaho is gonna be run not on fresh fuel, but on recycled fuel coming, um, coming from a powerhouse that operated in Idaho several years ago. We've got projects underway with the Department of Energy where we're looking to take um, that small scale recycling capability and expand it. And so the capital is really there for the powerhouse bit of our business, it, both Idaho and beyond Idaho. It's for fuel for our powerhouses, it's for our atomic alchemy business, and it's also really positioned us to, to grow that recycling business, which we would like to have up and running kind of um, in the next decade. All right, Craig. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate your time and congratulations again on that big Air Force contract. Shares of Oklo up more than almost 200 percent this year, up more than 500 percent on a year over year basis. That's Craig Belmer, CFO of Oklo. Thank you, Craig.